song says, angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God that we serve. Oh, he is so mighty. I, I was thinking today, how great is our God. Hallelujah. How exciting that it is to live for God. Amen. Isn't it exciting? Yes, it is. God is always doing something. Always. Something exciting. Amen. You know, if you don't think God was uh, humorous, he was, Jesus, it's humorous. Dude. You know, if you spit the dirt and you rub around and make these balls of mud and put them into blind eyes right. and tells him to go and wash in the pool of Salon. And so, okay, did, did Jesus need to spit the dirt, make a ball, put them in his eyes, and then tell him to go wash? He could have. I believe God, he could have just said, open your eyes, your eyes, it's done. Right. Isn't he humorous, okay? He, he, there are five loaves, two fishes, amen, so, and all this, this multitude of people, and so he prays over this five loaves, two fishes, and says, okay, now go, go out and distribute. And I can just see all of them, the disciples, they're going, where is this all coming from? Right. <laughs> Man, that's very humorous. All right. Look at all the people. They're all sitting down in groups and, and still feeding them and, and then they take up a whole bunch more. Right. After that. Wow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's exciting to me, you know. It, God's doing a lot of things, and isn't, isn't it joyful? It's joyful, unspeakable, full of glory. The word of the Lord. Never know what God's going to be doing next. Amen. The healing cancer, yeah, but making balls, put them in the, in the eyes. But God is just saying, be healed. Right. Believe, have faith, and believe. And what God's going to be doing next, hallelujah. I don't know. Amen. But, you know, come expecting. Right. Oh, amen. I expect something from the Lord. I expect God's going to be doing something great. Amen. He's always doing something great. Always. When God says something, then it's done. Amen. You can count on it. It's there. You can count on that being done. And I believe that tonight, amen. I know that there are a lot of things that this world needs, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm glad to be a part of this because, like I said, this is exciting. Amen. God going to use us? Yes, He is. Amen. You believe that? Yes. I believe it. I believe God's going to use us. Amen. I want to be, how many want to be used to God? Oh, I sure want to be used to God. Hallelujah. Use me, Lord. Amen. Let me pray for somebody sick. It's not me that, that heals. Right. But let me be an instrument. Let me pray for somebody. Right. Let me be a witness to somebody. Let me talk to somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands. Let's just about the presence of the Lord in tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. It's so exciting, God. It's so awesome to live for you. It's so awesome living for God. Thank you, Jesus, tonight for what you're doing, Lord, for each and every one, God. We thank you for your presence right now. So we enter into your gates with thanksgiving. And of course, with praise, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord, and we worship you, Lord. Oh, it's so awesome. You're an awesome God. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our God. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm just praying for someone right now. I'm just praying, God. If I, I'm praying over, uh, over Ukraine. Or, uh, you know what? God can do something for them. Because the people are praying for them. Are you praying for your neighbor? Are you praying for your brother and your sister? Your mother, your father? Your brothers, your children, your grandchildren, whoever. I'm praying for them. I want to pray for somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to speak.
speak good things. I want to speak good things to my neighbor. Oh my amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? Yes, amen. He gives us so many blessings. Right. I'm glad to be in His service tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome God. Oh, my Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Let's take a prayer request right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jim. Um, my friend Johnny, he's getting a uh, tube down. So they're going to look and see if his organ, if his rib cage is dangerously close to his organs. And if so, they're going to have to do surgery and all that. Right. And hopefully it's nothing too bad. And hopefully Man. he doesn't have to go through surgery. Man. He's also getting a balloon in his throat to make his throat expand as well. Right. And all that's happening this week, I think, maybe. I, I have no clue okay. in reality, but please he, he needs this he needs this Amen. yes he's the Lord God, right? be a blessing. That's, that's where it's at pray for somebody make it a blessing Amen. pray for Johnny in the name of Jesus Amen. hallelujah God oh what you're doing right now for Johnny someone else praise Amen. Amen. you can pray for my family yes Amen. brother Tom. friend of mine uh, Dennis is his name uh he has a real complicated medical history. He's had kidney transplants and rejection and repeat. But anyway, he's got a significant heart problem. And um, he's scheduled for a cast next week. And, and hopefully it can be fixed with uh, stents. Yes. Uh, you know, the, the doctor's already said, you know, if you can't fix it with while well, we, you're already under anesthesia, we'll just go ahead and do the open heart. And he's like, He's been waiting so long. He's like, I want to go ahead and do it, but right. But he, he's uh, really praying just for his stems, and uh, he's coming out of really Jesus that word for him. He's really, Amen. Uh, Jesus name. Really mercy, Lord. Really Amen. very sincere and has a lot of faith. All right. Holy Spirit. Spirit. We pray that you will answer his prayer. That's pray good. Just have stems. Have help. That's right. Amen. Oh Lord Jesus. Yes. Amen. God undertaking this need. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. Just a moment. I just appreciate everybody praying for this family. There's, you know, just like everybody in here, you know, we all have our troubles and our ugly days, you know. Right. Yes. And I just, I just want to thank everybody for praying for us. Amen. And for praying for everybody that walks through these doors, you know. That's I right. Mean, That's right. knows I may not remember everybody's name. Right. But he knows who I'm praying for. Yes, he does. I, just, I just wanted to let everybody know I went to the doctor today for, you know, blood work and all this good stuff you do every three months. And I lost another 10 pounds. And I told the doctor, Thank you know, she'd been on me really bad and I was quitting smoking. And I told her today was either my 30th day or 31st day, I don't know, but it was close there. And she just got plum so wow. excited and you lost 10 pounds. <laughs> you lost 10 pounds. <laughs> and I was like, well, I didn't know anything about that one until today. But I just thought, you know, we stopped Glory. smoking, you know, you don't lose no weight, you right, gain. Right. Or that's what I've always meant yeah, to that's And too. so I just said, you know what, that's just another reassurance that God took care of. Amen. And, you know, but I just want to let you know, you know, I, it just did not happen overnight. Right. This situation with me quit smoking. Right. It happened way before we started coming to church. Yeah. You know, because we let go of a lot of people we used to deal with, right. socialize with. Right. You know, back in December, I just started cutting people off. Yeah. For some reason, I just said, I can't take it no more. Yeah. So, you know, it's been... Things have been changing in our lives oh, since December. Thank you, Lord. And I just want everybody to thank you all in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lifting us up in y'all's prayers because it has meant a lot to me. And I just want to say thank y'all. Thank you, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, 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 that's what I'm talking about. My God. What a great, what an exciting God. Yes. Amen. Yes, amen. It's what God does. Wow. Glory. Someone else. Glory. Yeah. Amen.
times, brother. Amen. The Lord knows. Wow. Amen. Oh, that's so good. That's awesome. You got all them in your heart. You're praying, and God's hearing. Amen. Believe that? Amen. Really? Yeah. God's hearing. She does.
chapter 18 and verse 18 says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. need to bind the things of what God can do. So just loose. Now loose. You, you believe what God can do? You believe God's doing? Amen. And I love what that, and it's in red, Jesus speaking. Again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask. It shall be done for them of my Father, right. which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Yes, amen. How many of you believe the Lord is here? Lord. How many of you believe that there's two? Amen. How many believe there's more than two? Yes, amen. Hallelujah. So I'm asking, aren't you asking? I believe the Lord tonight. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to pray, God, tonight, God. You come into the house of prayer tonight, Jesus. Oh, we pray, Lord God, we're asking. We thank you for your word, God. If it were not true, God, it would not be so. Lord, we know, Lord God, that your word is true. And it's the truth tonight. Hallelujah, God. We're believing. We're trusting you, Lord, right now. You said trust in the Lord. We're trusting with our heart right now, God. Hallelujah. We're just reaching out, Lord Jesus. There are many, God. Oh, Lord, that in this world, God, hallelujah. It's chambers, oh, God, hallelujah. Many, there's many troubles. But, God, we ask, God, that you would just touch Johnny, God, right now, Lord. Hallelujah. That there be a blessing and there be a comfort on him. Hallelujah. I touch him, God. Bless him, Lord, as he goes through such a tragic surgery. But, Lord, we know that we, if you are with us, then there's no problem. You're our safety and you're our care and you're our hand. trouble and worry, God, but you can you can help him, Lord, right now, Jesus. You can touch his heart, touch his mind, touch his soul. Let him not worry. But reach out unto you, Lord, and, and believe in faith and believe in God that the surgery will be fine. God, your hand is guiding the doctors right now. Hallelujah. Before we even, even have a, a surgery, God, you go before us. in your holy name. I thank you, Lord, for touching my body, Lord, and lifting me up, giving me strength, giving me joy and strength. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for touching Sister Connie, Brother Tim, and their family. Hallelujah, Lord. That you're keeping us up, God, that you're lifting us up with joy and strength. children, Lord, and Sammy needs a touch, God. Sister Deb, God, give her strength, God, give her leading guidance, God, hallelujah, for whatever that she needs to do, God. You can fill her heart, Lord, mind, soul, spirit with strength, God. Touch Sammy, God, we pray, God, hallelujah. Thank you. Lord, we're believing in faith and trust right now, Lord, believing, God, we your word is true. And we stand on that promise right now. Thank you, Jesus, that we know, Lord, that you know every name. Lord, we don't have to remember every name, God, but Lord, we know that you know. Hallelujah. Right now, God, you know every request, every unspoken request. 
Lord. You see Amber, Lord, right now tonight, God, that, that you would touch her, Lord Jesus. And lead her, God. Lead those that are helping her right now. God, let her lift her hands up to you, God, for I know that she knows you in a mighty way. Help her, God. Lead her, God, for what she needs to do and help her mentally, physically, spiritually. In Jesus, in your name. Thank you, Lord. You see our friends and our neighbors right now, God. Oh, the thoughts of every heart, God. We know, Lord, that you know the thoughts. We don't even have to say, but you know our thoughts and you know our inner being. We ask, God, right now that you would bless in a mighty way. Bless, Father. We ask for your blessings. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour it out your spirit. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And everyone says in Jesus' name. Jesus.
give us the measure of faith. And Lord, we can use that faith to move mountains. Mountains of sickness, mountains of disease, mountains of sin, mountains of problems. God, your faith that you have placed in us. Amen. The power that you have placed within us. When we put that trust in you, God, you make the impossible possible. You set those who are captive free. Lord, you bring deliverance and rejoicing to the hearts that are burdened, God. Oh, thank you. Let's clap our hands and thank you for being so good. Hallelujah. 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 He's not asking you for something that you can't give him. He's asking you for something you can give him. Faith. Trust. Trusting in the Lord. Amen. Leaning not to your own understanding, the Bible says. Acknowledging him in all your ways. Why? So that he'll direct your path. Amen. I want God directing my path. Remember what I said? He moves the path. <laughs> Amen. We just keep walking for Jesus. We keep living for Jesus. We keep trusting Jesus. We keep holding on to Jesus. And he directs our path. And we are the victors. We are the winners, praise God, because we know in whom we put our trust. Hallelujah. Amen. I am so thankful for God's grace, his hand upon our lives. I do not, I do not really comprehend it. I've tried to wrap my mind around it. There are times in my life that he lets me see things, and he did that just yesterday. And uh, and my mind is blown. I don't I don't know what else to think of it except that he has his hand upon our lives in a way that I don't believe we can grasp. That's right. When it says the footsteps of a good man or woman are ordered to the Lord, it's hard to grasp how tightly he orders those steps. How close does he watch your life? How close does he watch my life? How tightly has he? managed or uh, micromanaged, if you will, right. our lives. Right. Amen. And I've, I've noticed this. There's been a few times in my life that God's led me to witness this. But yesterday we had to go to Sherman early in the morning and we head over there and oh, we're two thirds of the way to Sherman and we get behind a truck pulling a trailer from the dump, I'm guessing. And uh, they're doing about 50, 45 and, and 70. Okay. And, uh, and they're just poking along, and, and, and finally we get into Sherman, and, you know, there's not any really good place to pass them, and the traffic and that, and so we're just, we're just biding our time, you know, comment on it a little bit, that's about all you can do. And as we come into Sherman, we get to Friendship Road, and they turn left and turn off, and that's kind of a relief, you know, you're like, ah, oh, good, oh, we're in town now, no matter. <laughs> okay, you know, don't think a whole lot about it. We go about our business. Five hours later, we are headed back out of Sherman. Okay, no, we're headed back into Sherman. We had to go back into Sherman. The road they turned off on, they turned back out onto the road in front of us. The exact same vehicle that we had followed to that point that morning, five hours earlier, they pull out right in front of us and head off down the road. And I turned to my wife and I said, that's the same truck and trailer we saw turn off there this morning. Amen. And I've seen this happen before. So this is not just, I mean, there's, there's a chance, you know, you could go gambling and get three sevens. That's, there's a chance of that, but it's pretty slim. But I've seen this kind of thing happen in my life before. And I don't believe it's an accident. I believe God is trying to tell us I've got your life under control. Amen. Right. I've got you right where I want you. Amen. Yes. Down to the nanosecond. You're right where you need to be. Just trust in him. Hold on to Jesus. All right. He knows what's coming. He knows what's going. He knows what's going to be. He knows. Amen. And all you and I can do right now is enjoy right now. And thank God it's in church. Because we can enjoy this. Hallelujah. We can enjoy this time. Praise the Lord. There are some things that are not so enjoyable, but we can even find joy in that. And so I encourage you again, enjoy the journey. God, his desire. 
God's desire is that you and I would enjoy our journey. And because of that, he has given us something the world doesn't understand. They cannot grasp it. Amen. And many denominal people don't have without realizing it. And that is the comforter. Oh, Amen. Lord. How unique that Jesus would call his spirit. God would call his spirit the comforter. I will send the comforter. Amen. That's right. Why would he call the Holy Ghost, his spirit, the comforter? If it doesn't bring comfort. Amen. Amen. I mean, we all need comfort. This world around us, if you're if you're watching this world, it don't take long to get discouraged, depressed. Be careful, because you might get mad. That ain't gonna help nothing. <laughs> Amen. You'll just stub your toe somewhere, and then it'll hurt even more. But the Lord has given us a hope, if you will. Let's turn to the book of Acts chapter 9 and verse 31. Acts 9 and 31. I believe the Lord wants to remind us tonight that we have so much to be thankful for. Amen. Oh, so much to be thankful for. He has set it all in order. Amen. As I said earlier, the footsteps of a good man or woman are ordered of the Lord. If your path, if your footsteps are ordered, then every step you take, every step I take, everywhere we go, he's got it. He already knows what's going to happen. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. It says, Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, and were edified, or lifted up. And walking in the fear of the Lord, or the admonition, the respect, the honor, reverence of the Lord, and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost, they were multiplied. Walking in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. Church, you need to walk in the comfort of the Holy Ghost. I need to walk in the comfort yes, of the Holy amen. Ghost. Yes. Amen. The Holy Ghost is here to comfort us. He is here to give us reassurance, guidance, strength. He said it would teach you. It would lead you. It would guide you. Yes. Amen. He will comfort us. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God. For it is here. It is very present help in the time of need. And we believe. God, that you have everything in control. Yes. And it's times like this that we are reminded by your word and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that you got this. It's all good, Lord. Yes. And we can trust you in the journey. Amen. amen. In Jesus' name. Somebody said amen. 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 Let me encourage you right now. Trust in the process. All right. What am I saying? There is a process in serving God. When you are putting God first to the best of your abilities, okay, you're trying to honor Him, you're trying to read the Word, you're trying to pray, you're trying to stay close to Him, you're trying to treat others as He would have you treat them, trust in the process. He's going to work it out. Amen. Amen. Trust in the process. God has a process. Our life is a process. And you know what? That process is going to get us to heaven. Am I going to get you to heaven? No. But I'm part of the process. And so are you. That's, right. That's what's so awesome about this. Amen. God wants us to all be a part of the process. And the Holy Ghost allows us to do that. Because there are times the Holy Ghost will stop you. There are times that the Holy Ghost will tell you to come on. There are times that the Holy Ghost will direct you over here and over here. And you may not even know it. That's why you shouldn't be getting so mad at the people that slow you down and the people that get in your way and the people that do what seems like dumb things. It's just God's way of steering us. Amen. Guiding us, timing our walk, keeping us out of harm's way, Amen. allowing us to fulfill the calling in our lives, allowing us to be where we need to be when we need to be there because we're not like the world. We're not just running helter-skelter, trying, screaming, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. Because it's in his hands. Amen. And God is able. Somebody say that. He's able. Yes, he's, he's able to keep us. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts chapter 1. First chapter of the book of Acts. And let's go to verse 4. Acts 1 and 4. 
It says that being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. This is Jesus' last words to the disciples before he ascends. He says, but wait for the promise, which is the Holy Ghost, of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Amen. Yes. And he said, and then, then they said, when therefore they were come together, they asked, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? He said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Amen. You shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea, Samaria, under the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. In other words, God is directing you. Deal with it. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Have faith. Glory. Believe that. Trust that. Believe that. Let him do what he's doing. Amen. Mm. And I don't say that to be callous. I say that because we have a hard time trusting him. We have a hard time with the people that get in our way and the things that rise up. And it's like, oh, can anything else go wrong? Well, yeah, sure. But is it going wrong? Or is it possible that God is directing us, opening doors for us, allowing our light to shine? You know when a light shines brightest? When it's the darkest. Yes. If we turn all the lights off in here, all you need to do is just light a little tiny paper match and it will light the whole room because it's really dark. <laughs> but if you lit one right now with all the lights on, you probably see it. <laughs> you smell it <laughs> or you'll see it. Amen, old nasty sulfur burden. And so it is with our life. And there are times that God allows the world to get dark around us. Because it makes our light shine so bright. Sister Patricia didn't get a chance to be with us this last Sunday. She tried so hard. She, Her daughter brought her all the way up from Longview. And uh, they, they, they got to visit with us on Saturday. And it just wore out. And uh, she's got a lot of health problems. And she's on hospice. And so her, her days are probably numbered on this side. But she has testified in so many different ways. And, and even now, when she's in such poor health, she goes to the doctor's office, and she's sitting there with other patients like her that are, that are in, in hospice situations and really bad health situations. And one lady looks at her and said, there's just something different about you. You don't seem to be burdened down or, you know, like you're carrying all this struggle, you know. And she said, oh, no, not at all. <laughs> Amen. Because our hope is not in this world. Right. Amen. It's not in this circumstance I'm in right now. No. I'm going to heaven. Glory. Praise God. Praise and we're going somewhere better than this. Amen. And that brought so much hope. And not only that, she said, but she said, well, can I pray for you? She said, yeah, sure. Right there in front of God and everybody. Yeah. Amen. And I, I may have shared this, but word got back to the doctor. And when she went back to visit the doctor, the doctor told her, so I hear you've been, you've been working on folks out there and cheering them up and amen and praying for them. And so it's a dark hour. No, it's not. It's a chance for the Holy Ghost to shine. Yes, amen. Now, I don't know why we suffer so much as humans, okay? If you haven't figured it out, it's not easy. Now, when you're young and healthy, you're suffering because things aren't going your way. Everybody's messing with you. Nothing's the way you want it. Everything's off. Blah, blah. And then when we get old and we figured out how to enjoy the journey, our bodies won't do what they're supposed to. <laughs> you know? If it ain't one thing, it's another. And if that ain't enough, then you've got somebody sticking their head up in the middle of it trying to cause problems. That's the world we live in. Man born of woman, Job says, full of trouble as the sparks fly upward. Or it was written in the book of Job. I think that was one of his discouragers that come by to talk to him and help him. 
but we have a lot of struggles. Who ordained that? Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, in the New Testament it says. But the Lord, no, that was David, I think, and he says, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Yes. Amen. And I think it was it was uh, one of the one of the New Testament writers that talked about the, this trial of afflictions that we face, the things that we deal with, the struggles that we have. Amen. And it's just for a short time. Amen. We're going to be with Jesus real quick. Amen. Yes, and we can enjoy the journey. We can enjoy it through the Holy Ghost. Let's enjoy it. Amen. Let's Not because Ghost. the flesh is feeling good. All right? Right. Amen? But because God's doing great things. Sure. There are people that run races. Doing great things. They run marathons, triathlons, all kinds of feats that man tries to accomplish. And from what little experience I've got, they're grueling. They're not easy. They're very hard. They're very taxing. They push their bodies to their physical limits. And many times those limits are the amount of pain that they can deal with right. to accomplish the goal that they're striving for so that they can win a trophy. And you sure don't hear them walking around complaining about how much it hurts to run or to do what they did or to accomplish. No, they're busy breaking their arm trying to pat themselves on the back for what they accomplished. And then we who have the Holy Ghost are running a race. Yes. And yes, there's struggles in this race. But my goodness, it is not for a corruptible crown. Amen. It is for a crown that will endure forever. It is for life eternal. It is for a life without pain and suffering and sorrow, and all of that will be put behind us. Yes. That's real. And so we can rejoice. Amen. And we can pat Jesus on the back. Yes. Because <laughs> he's the one who makes this possible. The Lord, the Lord, and it's through the Holy Ghost. But we must challenge ourselves to walk in the Holy Ghost. Did the writer tell us? Amen. If you walk in the Spirit, All right. we must walk in the Spirit. We can't walk in the flesh. That's right. We focus on the flesh. All we can think about is that blister on our little toe, mm -hmm. how bad our lungs are burning, how much that person keeps getting in our way, and how all we can think about is the flesh. But if we can walk in the Spirit and we can start seeing the hand of God right. on our life, not right. just our life. Start seeing it on our neighbor yeah. and the people around us. Right. And we start taking advantage of the opportunities to encourage them, pray for them. Right. And if you pray, right. you know God's going to do something. And so you can pray for somebody who don't even know you're praying for them, yeah. pray for them. and expect to see results. Right. And then when it happens, and, and if you've got a lot of faith, you can tell them, I'm praying for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then when something happens, they're going to say, Thank you. God answered your prayer. Amen. If not, you can tell him after he does it. <laughs> said, I've been praying for you. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And the journey becomes so much sweeter. The expectations become so much higher. The hope in us is so much greater because Jesus set it up this way. He intended on us to enjoy our journey. Let's go back to the book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Oh, thank you, Lord. Wow. Yes. In this Gospel of John, John shares some really wonderful word that Jesus gives us. And this particular setting is dealing with most of 14, 15, and 16 are dealing with the Holy Ghost. And Jesus is trying to help us. In 14 and verse, uh, let's go to verse, let's start verse 12. John 14 and verse 12. Verily, verily, Jesus says, truly I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Yes. Wow. 
Wow. Yes. Jesus did some awesome stuff. Sure did. The miracles, the things that he did, blow our minds. And he said, the things that you do are going to be even greater because I'm leaving. I'm leaving it with you, verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We're to caution. Be careful for what you ask in Jesus' name. If you're asking for healings and blessings and deliverances, that's awesome. But be careful because you can get upset and just like the disciples, you can pray rebuke on people. And it may come to pass. And that's not what you want. Amen. Amen. Jesus rebuked a, a fig tree that was doing its job. Just wasn't time of fruit. And that fig tree dried up the roots and nobody ever got figs off that tree again. I believe that was a lesson for us. Amen. You can get upset and you can rebuke people. Rebuke spirits. If there's some bad spirits, you can bind them in Jesus' name. Lose the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's great. Yeah. But if you go to rebuking people, one time I rebuked a dog I had. I never saw that dog again. And I believe it was a lesson to me to be careful how I speak in Jesus' name. Because that dog had messed up as far as I was concerned one too many times. I said, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And that dog's countenance fell. And the next day he was gone and the little dog that always got out was in the yard. And I never saw him again. He was a bigger dog. And I believe that we need to understand we have authority when we speak in Jesus' name. Especially if you've got the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost has got you. Amen. I'll throw that in. Amen. Sometimes people get the Holy Ghost and they won't let the Holy Ghost move. God help us. Amen. Let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost wants to do. But if you ask anything. Verse 15. If you love me, and this is key to him doing, we've taught on this. Keep my commandments. Amen. If you've got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will guide you and the Holy Ghost will quicken your heart about things. And if you are sensitive to that, you're keeping his commandments, you're walking in the spirit, you're trying to do that which pleases God, then he is going to want to do what you ask, all right, or what you speak. Verse 16, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. We taught on this and it never gets old as we read through this set of scriptures in John 14 through I think 16 or 17. Uh, Jesus starts out here. He says, I'm going to pray that the Father will send the comforter in my name for you. Eventually, he just says, I'm going to pour out the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He's building his way up to that as we read through this. But the comforter is his spirit. Amen. That's what he's going to say. When, when Jesus ascended, he poured out his spirit on all humanity. And there are a bunch of people, Christians, that are all messed up because they think the Father is separate from the Son and the Son is separate from the Holy Ghost. And they're not. Amen. Amen. It's God manifesting himself as the Father, as the Son, as the Holy Ghost. And the reason he did this was to see if we could trust him that he could. And if we can't trust that he can do it, then we're going to split him up into three, two, whatever. There's all kinds of ideas on that. He said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him for he dwelleth with you. Who dwells with them right there? Jesus. He dwells with you yes, and shall be in you. Glory. I'm going to pray the Father. He'll send the Comforter in my name. All right? He said, he dwells with you now and he shall be in you. That's Jesus. Amen. Jesus is with them at that moment. Amen. And he's telling them, I'm going to be in you in the future, in the near future. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. Church, you're not comfortless. Amen. Jesus knows right where you're at. He knows all your struggles. He knows how hard it is. 
And he, he knows how hard it is for you. This is specific. All right? Because some things don't bother me that bother you, and some things bother you that don't bother me. God knows what kind of comfort you and I need, depending on what we're dealing with. And he said, I will not leave you comfortless. Thank Amen. Lord. We Lord. need the comforter. Yes, we need to trust in the Holy Ghost. We need to trust that he's directing our path. We need to trust that he's got this. All right? This is not an accident. We're not just... This is one of the big hang-ups. Uh, just one of them. With evolution. Evolution says that we're all just biologic pond scum that somehow has evolved to become what we are. In other words, we don't amount to no more than the rest of the biological matter in the world. Well, I beg to differ with that. I was created in the image of God. God made me. He made you with a purpose, with a plan. We're not just biological matter that has just sprung up out of its own volition. We're here because God created us and had a plan for us. And we are special in the kingdom of God and in God's yes. interest and in God's plans. That's why they teach evolution. That's why Satan loves evolution. Mm -hmm. Because evolution just says that we've just evolved. And there's no reason for us to. It doesn't matter. We're no different than anything else. We're no different than the rocks and the trees. And So you got people out there that are loving trees more than they love people. you got people out there loving animals more than they love people. you got. It's all messed up. Because they don't know what they're supposed to love or what they're supposed to care about. Because to them, it's all the same. Amen? Right. Well, this is going to be burned up, folks. Mm -hmm. But God's prepared heaven for us. Amen. He didn't prepare it for the animals. He didn't prepare it for the trees. He didn't prepare it for whatever. Heaven is for us. The people that he has created that are living on this planet that he has placed here. And we are special in the kingdom of God. And he wants you to be comforted. He wants me to be comforted. He said in verse 19, Yet a little while, and the world sees me no more. But you, you shall see me, because I live, you shall live also. He talked about the Holy Ghost. He said, because just because my body's disappeared, my spirit's going to be alive and well with you, and I'm going to be in you. Verse 20, At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, Ye in me and yeah. I in you. Yeah, thank you He's dialing in on it. Amen. He's telling the disciples, don't you worry because you see my physical body leave. Because I'm fixing to move on the inside of you. I'm fixing to be on the inside. I am going to be the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. I have a physical body now, but I'm going to come back as a spirit to fill you, the church, with my spirit. Amen. We have so much church that he has set up. Again, verse 21. He that hath my commandments uh, and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and we and will manifest myself to him. How's he going to manifest himself to us? The Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Jesus, God, robed in flesh is going to manifest himself to the church. How? Through the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Amen. Mm. It's no accident that he calls his spirit the Comforter. Amen. Because it does not matter whether you have a physical need, a spiritual need. Amen. It doesn't matter if you have an emotional need. The Holy Ghost. God's spirit is all you need. It can correct, right, heal, deliver any need, any need in your life. Anything. Amen. You, I just have to hook up with Jesus. Amen. If we can find his will in our life, if I can find where he wants me, if I can come to grips with and accept that I'm right where he wants me, and if I'm not, then I need to move. Amen. Amen. That's what repentance is. Repentance is when I realize, oh, you don't want me over there. You want, okay, God, I'm here. What do you want? That's repentance. That's doing what God wants. Right. And when we're doing that, we're keeping his commandments, and we can have the moon. Amen. 
He will give us anything. He wants to honor because he knows our heart is to please him. And if our heart is to please him, well, his heart is to bless us. This is why it's so important that we learn to love each other, forgive each other, carry one another's burdens, on and on and on. There is so much to that that we're trying to grasp. And I'm amazed. I talked to a dear brother that I love and, and came to visit the other day. And I, I couldn't help but be a little bit tickled. He talked about how much, you know, uh, I said something about, you know, loving the people of God, loving people and, and so on. He says, yeah, that's, that's what it's all about. And he's really excited about that. And then later on, as we're talking, he pulls his shirt up and says, I'm packing heat. Do you know that? Yeah. And I'm thinking, so you can take out the sinners, right? <laughs> and I make fun of it, but that, you know what I mean? And that's we as humans. Oh, I'm loving them, all right, God, but you let them get in my way, and I'm going to run them off the highway. <laughs> well, and I would suggest you let him worry about that. Amen. Because he's the one who's going to protect you and me. Amen. If it really comes down. And if we're taken out, where are we going? Well, I'm going to heaven. I don't know about you. Hey Amen. I, I ain't worried about leaving this place at all. It's the world around me, they got some different issues. Amen. They may not be ready for Jesus. And I don't want to be the one responsible for taking them out. Amen. And I realize that they may be hurting and doing things and carrying on and so on. I don't know. Paul was killing Christians. Well, it sure been nice if somebody had pulled out their piece and put him out. But if they had done that, we wouldn't have 14 books in the New Testament. Amen. Amen. That's right. He was having innocent Christians, the sweetest people on the face of the earth, Holy Ghost filled believers, put in prison, beaten, stoned. He was responsible for that. And we would think if it was up to me, Man, we need to take him out. It's logical. But not the plan of God. If you'd have messed up the work of God, something fierce. Of course, I don't think you can mess God up, but <laughs> you know what I mean? God had plans for him. Amen. And yet through our eyes, the flesh. That's why it's so vital that we walk in the spirit. And, and for those that pack heat, I know it's noble and there's great and I'm, I'm, I'm not against it but I just don't feel comfortable with it. I'll, <laughs> I'll put it that way. Amen. Because I know preachers are packy. Amen. Yeah. And that's between them and the Lord. And they may take out a few sinners somewhere before the journey's over. But I thought we were in it to win the sinner not take them out. I'm going to heaven. I don't have to worry about this. I'm not down here for long. Neither are you. Amen. I've lived 65 years. You put a tape measure up, you measure up 65 years, and we're given 70? It's got far to go. I may live past that. I hope I do, but I've, I've already done funerals for people younger than me. So, you know, we're not going to be here long at best. And so finding our balance and letting God be the comfort that we need in this journey. Amen. Let's go to verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Now he's, he's breaking it down. Whom the Father will send in. Whose name? My name. My name. I wonder why he would do such a thing like that. He shall teach you all things. Bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. The Father is going to send the Comforter in the name of Jesus because the Comforter is Jesus. Father's Jesus too, by the way. Jesus is Jesus. I've got to explain that to you. Amen. 
Jesus is going to give us what? Peace. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The Holy Ghost was sent to give us peace. And yet, didn't he tell us that we were going to have to endure tribulation? Didn't he tell us we were going to have to suffer? That's part of our journey. Amen. Now, sometimes it's outright persecution against the church. But right now, we're in America, and, and America is built on a foundation of fearing God. And so, therefore, we have some protection, and we don't have to worry too much about persecution. We don't have to worry about it locking us up, throwing us in prison, beating us like they did in Bible times. But we still face persecution because the enemy tries to persecute us. Yes. The enemy uses people to try to persecute us and cause problems for us. Maybe he can attack our bodies if God lets him. But if he does, you know it's for a purpose. That's why Job got sick. It wasn't because God didn't love him. It's because God was going to let his light shine. Then he's going to heal him and bless him tenfold for it. So when it's all over, said, and done, Job was like, oh, thank you, God. That was awesome. At the time, it was killing him. But when he got through it and God poured out his blessings on him for his obedience and how he pleased and served God, oh, no, he wouldn't trade that for nothing. And neither will you or I. Amen. Amen. Because we'll see how much good that it did. Hebrews 12 and 1 says that Jesus despised the shame of the cross. He endured the shame of the cross for the joy that was set before him. All right? It was joy set before him. We're not done in John yet. Amen. But I just throw that in there. He knew that Calvary was going to be brutal. But it was okay. Because he knew what it would accomplish. We have salvation today. We have the blood. Amen. Oh, goodness. i got to be careful here. Time's getting away. Um... Let's go to let's go to verse chapter fifteen and verse twenty six. Just a couple more verses. But when the Comforter, Jesus says, is come, whom I will send to you from the Father. And wait a minute, didn't he just say I'm going to pray the Father and they'll send the Comforter in my name? Like I said, we're, he's, he's progressively dialing in for us here. So here he says, But when the Comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me, and you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. The Comforter. Amen. Jesus is the Comforter. God is the Comforter. Amen. There's no splitting him up, dividing him, or anything else like that. And finally, in uh, 16, chapter 16 and verse 7, and there's a lot of other good stuff you can read through this whole chapter setting. It is powerful. Chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you, for you, that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Jesus is the Comforter. He's the Holy Ghost. And on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2 and 1, the Holy Ghost is poured out for the first time. The disciples are filled with what? God's Spirit. Yes. Amen. They spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Cloven tongues like as a fire sat on them. And they began to shine. And people began to come and see what the commotion was. They heard them speaking in their own languages. And then finally Peter is able to witness to them and tell them how that this is the promise that was spoken of in Joel. I'll pour out my Spirit on your sons your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions and and. I'll pour out my spirit in those days. He said, this is that which Joel spoke of. Right. And how that they, these Jews had crucified Christ, the Messiah. And finally, in Acts 2 and verse 36, they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? Mm -hmm. They heard what he was saying. It resonated. They realized that's what had happened. And he said, repent. 
and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the Comforter, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Jesus in you, as Paul later says, Jesus in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory, the anointing of the Lord. Greater is he, church, that is in you than he that's in the world. The Comforter is not just a Comforter, but Jesus is letting us know in the Gospel of John, he's going to comfort you. He will be there to comfort you. And there are times you are going to need comforting. And it will probably be in the middle of the night when nobody else is up. You're going to need comfort. Right. And he'll be there. He will hear you. He will bear with you. He will share with you. He will teach you, lead you, guide you. He will comfort you. He will give you the knowledge that you need. If you can see the good in it, then you can accept the process. But if you feel like that the process is destroying you or what you love, you're not going to be able to deal with that. You're not going to be able to sleep. You're not going to be able to accept the outcome unless the Holy Ghost tells you, I got this. Amen. This is good. Ananias, remember when the Lord told Ananias to pray for Saul? Ananias said, Lord, you know how he's done a lot of bad to the church. And the Holy Ghost told Ananias he's a chosen vessel. He's going to have to suffer many things for my name's sake. In other words, Ananias, I'm going to use him greatly. But he's going to, he's going to have to go through a lot. Ananias is like, I'm in. Amen. That's all the comfort he needed. That was the guidance that he needed. As long as he knew that it was God, if it's God, it's good. It's gold. And that's what we need, church. We need to know it's God. And if you know you're where God wants you, then it doesn't matter. When the Holy Ghost told Paul that he was going to go to Rome and, and all that, and the church people, members, began to prophesy and say, the man that owns this girl, this girl is going to be bound and taken to Rome, and, uh, and, and he may die, and so on. And the, the people were saying, oh, Paul, don't go, don't go. Paul says, why are you breaking my heart? I'm not willing to go but to die if that's what God wants. This is what God wants. I'm good with it. And so they all said, okay. What can we say? The Lord's will be done. Amen. And if we know that we're where God wants us, if we know we're doing what God wants us to do, hang in there. Amen. Amen. He'll reveal down the road what all he's been doing. I guarantee you, Paul had no clue what he accomplished until he got to heaven. When he got to heaven, he would... Amen. God was using him night and day in so many different ways, and it was just out. And, and today, you know, I mean, we're all gaining strength from Brother Paul, Amen. who was Saul, who was a dirty, no count, low down, Christian killing machine. Look what God did with him. Amen. And so it is for us. We can be comforted. Jesus did not leave us comfortless. In closing, Acts 1 and 8, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses. Your life, my life, is a witness. Whatever he's allowing us to go through is to be a witness. And all we can do is shine. Give God the glory. All right. And he will make it work. God, he's going to bring it to pass. Yeah. Let's stand to our feet. Mighty God, your grace has brought us so far. Some of us, Lord, have been so privileged to see your hand reveal so much. And God, we rejoice in that. There are others, Lord, that may be in the valley of decision and they are struggling and having a difficult time. And Lord, you're with them. You're right there with them, God. Amen. And there's no night too dark. There is no pit too deep. But Lord, you can be with them and you will guide us. And Lord, all we can do is surrender. Surrender our will to yours. Find the word of God. Let your spirit speak to us. And if we have been filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord, it's imperative that we seek the spirit, the Holy Ghost. Get prayed through. God, you will direct us and keep us like never before if we are led by the spirit. And Father, we are thankful for this tonight. Comforting as you comfort in such a wonderful way. Yeah. In Jesus' name, amen.